it's Erica Brodnock and um, this is just helping you to be your best you using the heart math tools and techniques. So the Institute of Heart Math was founded in 1991 and um, they've actually been researching how the heart impacts the human body in our lives um, since that time. And they've done some amazing research and, and found some amazing things that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So, first things first, what does your best you look like? I mean, um, Jilly and Carol have been absolutely amazing in setting up my talk today, so I'm feeling really, really blessed because you guys are starting to be able to get to the crux of what your best you actually looks like now. And the next thing is, um, what gets in the way? What gets in the way of that? What are the things that hold you back from being your best you? I'd like to say that it's always going to be stress. Um, stress comes in a million different forms, but it's always going to be stress. So the definition of stress, according to Richard Lazarus, is that it's a conditional feeling that's experienced when a person perceives that they don't have the resources to meet the demands that they're facing in their day-to-day -day life. So. Um, it, Tony Robbins often says as well that the, um, the definition of depression is that your expectation of the world and what your life actually looks like don't match. So what are the main sources of stress? Well, they're either going to be problems in communication or problems in perception. Now, um, we all know that we see the world through certain filters and that's what I'm going to go into this. If we have time, um, I will take you through the communication exercise. If not, then I'll send it to you afterwards so that you can start to look at how you can improve the communication that you have with people. But today, we're going to be working through the, the perception side of things. So, what's the impact of um, stress on our lives? And how many of you have ever felt backed into that corner? I know I certainly did, um, just as I said. I was diagnosed as having bipolar disorder, so you can't get further into a corner than that, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but, you know, the st stress impacts us mentally, emotionally, physically, and socially. And so we're looking at how those impacts on our lives can be stopped. So there are some statistics about stress. And it's six times more predictive of cancer, heart disease, um, than smoking is. And all of the other things that we're traditionally taught will kill us. Actually, stress is the biggest killer. So in order to look at what would be causing us to be stressed, I wanted to take us through how our emotions affect our physiology. So... Emotions are faster than, um, than thoughts, and I know that seems weird because it's, you know, what comes first, is it the chicken or the egg? Um, but emotions are quicker than thoughts. They drive our physiology through the two pathways, and that's the autonomic um, nervous system and our hormonal systems. So, positive emotion leads to renewed energy, obviously a stress-free life. Um, resilience and it also optimises learning and I'll talk to you about why it optimises learning um, shortly. So as humans, as we all know, being matrix re-imprinting, did I see everybody's hand go up? Are we all matrix practitioners on this course? Is, can we just have a show of hands just to make... Yeah, so everyone is. So we all know um, that as humans we were designed to act um, emotionally first and then um, consciously afterwards or intellectually so when we have a reasonable memory it takes a slow track and it goes to the amygdala, amygdala um, through the thalamus gland and it's nice and slow we get there when we get there it's not a problem there's nothing to worry about however if we get a perception or a trigger that something's dangerous. It goes to um, the amygdala through an absolute fast track and it just goes straight there and you're into fight and flight before you know it. So there's no um, critical thinking or control over the reaction that we have. 
So that's when the autonomic nervous system gets um, uh, activated and that will also activate our adrenals which then um, instigate the production of cortisol. So it doesn't just happen when there is a dog for instance. These systems run when we just say that there's a threat to our reputation, our self-worth or our ego. Um, and anything that we perceive as a threat is going to, to trigger us. So, how do you see yourself? Um, because that's what this all boils down to. It's all about our perceptions and our perceptions of the world that we live in. And the most important question in, in this is, do you see yourself as a pussycat or a lion? Um, no, the most important question is um, what's affected your opinion of whether you see yourself as a pussycat or a liar? <laughs> so did you accept someone else's opinion and someone else's beliefs and then allow those um, opinions and beliefs to enable you to form your own belief which now leads to your perceptions? I'd say yes. <laughs> so, um, and what the system is there to do, what our amygdala is there to do, is act as a security system to detect threats. But, what if it's not just detecting threats, it's detecting all of the negative beliefs that we hold about ourselves and about the world in which we live in, and that's what's being triggered. So I'd like to assert that human mind chatter is one of the most destructive forces on earth because the, the conversations that we have with ourselves, if they're the wrong conversations, are going to absolutely destroy everything that we set out to do. If somebody's upset in the present, it's going to be because they're having thoughts. It'll either be that they're angry or fearful about something that's happened in the past, or there are other emotions. I've just put anger up there because there could be guilt and all sorts of different bits and pieces, sadness. Um, or there's some sort of fear um, about the future. And fear, acronym, false expectations appearing real. So just have a little think about for a few seconds, what is it that pushes your buttons? What are your own beliefs? What are the beliefs that have been handed down and passed down to you? Um, and I'll come on to the fact that you know we, we use that um, we use matrix to be able to work through our beliefs. But what are they? Get identification and acknowledgement of the situation that we find ourselves in. To me, is fifty percent of the healing because if you don't know you've got a problem or a limiting belief lurking there, then you just don't know. And ignorance isn't bliss. <laughs> so, you can't always control the thoughts that come into your head, but you can um, control the thoughts that stay there. And a lot of today is, um, or my section of today, is going to be showing you how you can get that control over things that stay in your head. So, we all want to do our best. We all want to win. We, I mean, that's what we're here to do as human beings. We want to be able to perform at our peak. And looking at the curve um, based on Yerkes Dawson, Dawson, yeah. Dodson law um, about optimum performance, what you can see is that there'll be a rise in performance um, as long as there's a rise in pressure. But once that pressure becomes a challenge and then subsequently be becomes stress, what starts to happen is that people lose their perception and focus, they're unable to switch off, they struggle to motivate themselves and then others, and then they head back to default behaviour. So, the can everyone see? I will, I'll make sure that the slides are available to you anyway, so, um, but essentially what that leads to is poor performance and then if you're not careful it will lead to emotional breakdown because the stress becomes overwhelming and people are just unable to cope under the pressure. 
And the reason that that happens is because we've got the autonomic nervous system, as I was saying. And people are either in sympathetic or parasympathetic. Now, when you're in um, the sympathetic side, um, you are in stress at the end of the day. So what we're trying to achieve with the heart math, with the use of the heart math technology, is to keep people performing high um, and out of the sympathetic um, nervous system and in the parasympathetic nervous system so that they're able to continue thinking straight, they're able to continue to motivate themselves, um, they're able to continue to function properly because when you're in parasympathetic, uh, when you're in sympathetic, um, your digestive system shuts down, um, your critical thinking shuts down, everything shuts down except for the blood that pumps right the way to the, um, the extremities, which are the limbs that you're going to need to either fight or flight. That's the way the body's been designed. And what actually happens is, as I was saying before, the adrenals um, get activated and for the sympathetic nervous system, what starts to flood the body is a hormone called cortisol. And if you're in parasympathetic, the hormone that floods is DHEAs. Now, DHEAs, I'll come on to that in a second. So when you're in sympathetic, you um, and you're in, um, yeah, so when you're in the sympathetic ner uh, nervous system and there's high arousal, you'll be frustrated, angry, um, anxious and defensive. If there's low arousal, there'll be the loss of interest and the depression that I was talking about earlier. If you're in low emotion on the parasympathetic side, you're cool, calm, in control, no pressure, absolutely fine, able to crack on and deliver. And when you're in high, high arousal and, um, and in the parasympathetic side, you're dynamic, passionate, confident, and connected. So what are the effects of cortisol on the body? It slows your thinking, creates blood sugar imbalances, so this is where you end up with diseases like heart disease, um, diabetes, high blood pressure, um, weakens muscle tissue, um, decreases bone density, so again things like chlorosis and a number of the other ailments that you see people getting as they go through a period of life even if they're not performing very high just because they're performing and the stress is continuing after a point you're going to drop off the edge anyway um, so that's not, that's not a great prognosis so we're going to start to look at the increased levels of DHEA and what they can do it helps prevent osteoporosis it improves the skin hydration um, boosts the immune system improves memory does all sorts and um, it makes you younger, which is absolutely, yeah, that's secret. It is, it's, it is a very long, um, oh, I, and I can't recall it off the top of my head. That's just sent me into fight and flight. Um, so <laughs> 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 It's a reason why it's called DHEA, because it's literally like this. Yeah. Is it a pill you can take? No, it's, sorry? Is no. it a pill you can take? No, but I'm going to show you how to get it in okay. a second. Just give me a minute. <laughs> we're coming on to it. Um, so, it's, it's, what we're going to be doing today is literally teaching you to, well, actually, what, you, what most people have been doing over the last five days is learning how to look in the filing cabinet, pick out the rubbish, shred it, and um, start to change um, their perceptions. So it, I'm just adding tools to the toolbox um, here with you today because heart math is just another way of, and, and Carl incorporates it in Matrix anyway, but it's just another way of being able to, to go through that process. So the change curve, and we see this in, in meta-medicine for those of you that have had the privilege of looking at that. But essentially what happens is that there's an emotional response, you get your shock, your resistance, there's the feeling of a loss of control, you start to get really worried and scared that things have completely gone wrong and changed, then you have the low, the low morale. 
um, and then you start to explore what the, the new future might look like and the possibilities that that brings, you discover and then you adjust. And the thing with it is, is that this is the same as our sort of sleeping and waking patterns. It's called the circadian pattern, I believe. Um, and so you'll find this pattern throughout life everywhere. So looking at heart-brain communication, what is the role of the heart in, in all of this? Why am I standing up here speaking about heart math? And it's quite surprising the amount that the heart actually controls and what the heart's able to do. It has its own complex nervous system, it has its own brain, and it produces more information to the brain than the brain produces to it. So if you start to use your heart to your advantage, um, it's advantageous. Um, <laughs> right, so um, it, it actually controls um, all of our neurological, hormonal, um, the pressures, and it's also electro, it's electromagnetic. I can say the word. Um, <laughs> so it sends information round to the rest of the body and obviously out into the morphic fields that Jill was talking about earlier. So our perceptions and emotion uh, affect the autonomic nervous system, as I've said before, but it also affects our heart rhythms. So the top one, I don't know if you can see this writing from back there, but the top one shows the heart rhythm of frustration. So it's jagged, it looks volcanic. Um, and then the lower one shows the heart rhythms of appreciation, which are just nice, smooth sine waves um, that are going back um, going up and down and obviously one is run by cortisol and the other is run with DH with DHEA. Yeah. Okay. And um, so looking at the um, the brain circuits and how the DHEAs and the cortisol down at the bottom will um, affect that. So once, when we go into fight and flight, the thinking centres at the top of the brain are completely shut down, as, as I was saying to you um, before. And you're looking at the autonomic nervous uh, system being activated um, and cortisol flooding the body. That's completely the opposite to um, when the DHEAs are released because the thinking centres are opened up, people are able to think more clearly, they're able to react more appropriately to a pressure situation. So the first brain um, deals with the hormonal control, the, it's our reptilian brain, um, the um, fight and flight um, responses that we have. The second brain is territory, fear, anger, and attack, and then it's fine perception for the third brain, which is where we're into the cortisol area and we're thinking and we're interacting with other people. So research has shown that when heart rhythm patterns are coherent, um, we have heightened mental clarity, improved decision making, um, and we're able to just reduce our stress and increase our emotional stability. So using the heart math technology that Carl often used to demonstrate on the uh, matrix training, you're able to see that what um, you're doing is, cre is creating not only a coherent pattern um, that looks nicer, but one that runs right the way through your body. So um, when somebody's using the heart math technology, their brain, their heart, and their blood pressure are all running on the same rhythm. So, it's the difference between, between being in sync or out of sync. And now we're going to just have a quick look at how that affects not just us, but the people around us. So, I'm sure you guys can feel that I'm a little bit nervous being up here. <laughs> and that's just, it, it, it's, well... You should be able to, because otherwise this doesn't work. <laughs> so, <laughs> essentially, how you're feeling is radiated around you, and it affects everybody that's around you at the end of the day. Um, and and that's, the, <laughs> that's the point of that. So if you look at a classroom, 
if you've got, I mean, I usually teach this in schools and that's why there's a classroom on there, um, but it works for every room. So that's whether you're with your families in a situation like this or, you know, wherever. But if you've got someone that's leading and they are incoherent, that incoherence spreads right the way around the room. Conversely, if you have someone that's leading that is coherent, which I will be in a minute, um, <laughs> that coherence spreads around the room and it starts to um, enable other people to respond better to you. And also take in what it is that you're saying better. And that just, it coherence breeds coherence at the end of the day, so you can end up spreading coherence. So there was some research that's been done by um, Dr. Barbara Fredrickson and she's written a book called Positivity. It's an absolutely amazing book and what it says is that in order to, um, to build effective resilience and live a happy and fulfilled life, we need to have three positive things happen to us for every one negative thing that happens to us. Or at least we need to be able to perceive that three positive things happen for every one negative. So this is again all about perception. Um, have you also heard that um, there have been studies into people's experience and that if people don't have challenges in their life in one given day, that it can also lead to depression? If like, for example, nine things that were challenging Mm -hmm. in one given day, even if they're not hugely challenging? Well, yeah, because if we're not growing, we're dying. It's as simple as that, and um, there's, there's no ifs, buts, or maybes about that. But I guess there's a difference between experiencing a challenge and experiencing something that's negative, because a challenge doesn't have to be negative. Yeah. What was the name of the author of the book, Positivity? Uh, Dr. Barbara Fredrickson. Okay, thanks. Right, so we're going to look at the, the power of appreciation and the, the ability that we all have to start to get in touch with something that we appreciate or indeed that we're proud of whenever we want to in order to start to switch the balance so that we're not constantly experiencing the negatives without getting our fix of the three positives that we need to create a brilliant life. So, um, the, this is quite small, I know. So, the positive emotions, love, joy, gratitude, serenity, there's explanations next to them. I'm not going to read them all out to you, but I will make sure that you get a copy of the, um, the presentation. Um, interest, hope, pride, amusement, inspiration and awe. So, those are just a few of the positive emotions that you might choose to feel on a day-to-day -day basis. And that leads me nicely on to the quick coherence exercise. So I know that Carl teaches this um, as part of the um, matrix training, but quick coherence is really, really simple. It's about finding a positive emotion before you start, if you can, um, if you're not in the matrix and crying. Um, but if you, if you can, finding a positive emotion before you start, and then actually just putting that to the side but then starting to use the rhythmic breathing, um, and that is just, first of all, breathing in for six, and out. Excuse me while I just bliss out. Um, so, and then you start to put the focus onto the heart. So if you just imagine that um, the breath was passing through your heart as you take a breath in for six, and then again out for six. And in for six, passing through the heart. And out for six. And in. And out. And then now, if you just add the positive emotion, so whatever it is that you thought about when you decided what it was that you were proud of, or what it is that you love and appreciate, Add that picture in now and then continue with your breathing in for six and out. And 
can just start to notice how good that feels and how different it feels to when you're breathing erratically and not focusing on something that fills you with love and appreciation. And that's something that you can do to get back to neutral really, really quickly. Um, because all it means is that you just need to close your eyes for a second, take a few deep breaths and focus with steely intent on something that you completely love and appreciate or care about immensely. Um, and then make sure that the breathing is focused through the heart as well. So, set up beautifully by Carol earlier. Um, <laughs> you already have your goals, I, I guess, because I was going to ask you to take a few minutes to say that if I presented each and every one of you with a golden ticket today, what would you use your golden ticket to do? Um, what is the thing, the one thing that you want to do um, that if there were no limits, if there were no restraints, um, you would be able to do it? And what we're going to do is something called a heart locking. So if you've all got that, has, has everyone, can I have a show of hands just to see that everyone's got their one thing? Did you do the exercise before? Okay, so there are a few people who still don't. So could you guys that don't have it, we'll give you a couple of seconds just to get the one thing that you would do if there were no limits. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And so, once you have your one thing, it's about now taking that one thing and um, doing what's known as a heart lock-in. And so, to do the heart lock-in, it starts with the same steps that I just took you for, through before, which is shifting your focus to the area around your heart, breathing in rhythmically. So... When I'm working with children, I sometimes start at in for three, out for three, depending on where they're at. So if you find that taking a breath in for six is stressful, don't do six. Because the, what we want to achieve is the opposite of stress. So if it's five, do five. Um, and, and just sort of adapt it to make it comfortable. So activate that feeling, your golden ticket moment. I want you to hold that in your heart as well as being uh, doing your rhythmic breathing. And then once you're holding that into your heart, just keep the focus. So you've got a promise not to tell Carl, but when I'm just about to re-imprint a picture into um, the matrix, I get my clients to do a heart locking um, just before you do, because that energy of breathing it in and out before um, they push it out into the universe and just holding the picture there for that time, I find um, just intensifies the whole experience for them and then they've got something then to just keep heart locking in um, and re-imprinting on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get in trouble now? <laughs> no, it's, it's great. It's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a really good idea. Mm. So let's let's do a heart lock-in. Let's hold your picture. How long have I got left? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, let's do a heart lock-in. <laughs> so um, get get your golden ticket picture. I want you to. Feel, feel what it feels like, hear what it sounds like, see what you're seeing, identify with it, completely get into that space, place that picture into your heart and then breathe in and out.
you're all looking so happy and peaceful, but I don't want to disturb you. <laughs> but does, did anyone else notice the immense feeling of peace that just spreads right the way through your body? And it's almost as though you're taking the colour and putting it through your body all over again. And as I say, I, I find it a really blissful experience to, um, to see clients go through and to, to be able to, to share with them. Um, so it's amazing. And then once you push that out into the universe, there's, there's no way it's not going. So <laughs> it's, it's got to get there. And, and Eric, it's actually a nice way to do your 21 day. Absolutely. Yes. Because how do you do, do you tap here or... You could do that every day. And the thing with it is, is that you don't necessarily, I wouldn't t say to take the tapping out of it because no. I think that the, <coughs> you see the tapping and then it's just at the end before you're about to um, push it out into the universe that you start to just say, right, hold that picture there now incorporate this mm. rhythmic breathing and then it gets people to a point of i mean you're definitely you would have been in in um, sort of alpha anyway mm. doing the matrix re-imprinting process but i i would assert that this will take you right down to deep delta so that when you're imprinting that out you're doing it in the best possible position for it to get to the universe and um you know, when I first got, got up here and Carl was talking about all of the things that I've been being able to achieve, I 100% attribute it to the fact that when I'm imprinting, I'm doing it in a way that there's no messing. Do you see what I mean? There is, there's no messing, it is just going straight out. So, um, the, the one thing, because I'm going to teach you something next now, which is called the freeze frame, and um, the reason for that is because... <coughs> Um, there is a clinical term for life without problems <laughs> and it's not one that we want to experience so it's 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 we're bound to come up against things that are problematic and situations that we're we're not going to like it's 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 life <coughs> so enter freeze frame and what this is about is being able to be in a moment, be in a, a dodgy situation, as I would say with my, with my very nice Cockney accent, um, and get yourself to a place where you choose what it is that you're going to focus on in that situation. So it's again recognising that you're in a stressful situation, but you're able to say, right, OK, I'm going to press pause on that. Um, there's a guy called Dr. Robert Anthony that I often listen to and he says cancel, cancel, thank you for sharing. Um, and it's just a way of either if you're in a, in a physical situation you can do that. Cancel, cancel works brilliantly for mind chatter um, because you can then press the pause button on that and then choose what it is that you're going to then focus on and start to focus on that and then as your mind wanders bring yourself back to the positive focus and then as your mind wanders, which it does, bring yourself back again. So um, we're not going to go through doing the freeze frame because it is just as simple as that. It's about saying I choose to press pause um, and actually pressing the pause button and starting to reevaluate where you are if it's a physical situation. Um, and where it is that you actually want to be and stepping into that space instead. And again, the um, measurements of the rhythms, the body rhythms, and the biofeedback, when somebody is in the stressful situation and just breathing as they usually would, is um, here on the left. And, <laughs> and with the um, using the freeze frame technique, taking yourself into a better place and then breathing rhythmically, you're, um, you're getting yourself back into coherence. So that's the way that you can turn a situation around. So um, neutral is just about centering yourself. Um, freeze frame we've had a look at and it's about getting yourself back into a space where you can start to think clearly um, find a new perspective on what it is that's happening in that moment um, quick coherence is about 
Quick coherence, um, I highly recommend using that if you've got to go into a meeting or before you need to get up and give a presentation or <laughs> I should have done it today um, <laughs> or, or anything that's going to be an imminently stressful situation um, just go into quick coherence and then heart locking as I say um, use that in the matrix as often as you possibly can because it, it works phenomenally the other thing is that um, I always recommend to my clients um, to create a safe space so um, I, I which is similar to what you were just doing a little while ago, actually, Jill. Um, and it's about the best day um, that Carol mentioned earlier and creating their best day, but then also taking honing that right down to what's the location, where are you specifically. Um, you'll see my um, safe place in a moment because it's on the next slide. Um, no, the one after. Um, but it's it's everybody's going to have their own individual vision of where it is that they feel safest. Um, but again, when you're doing heart lockings and um, and setting people um, homework to kind of say right, okay, keep re-imprinting this. Um, if they don't have a specific memory that they've worked on and there's not a new picture, then just re-imprinting their safe space. Um, and doing heart lockings around their safe space will just set them up for a day of feeling safe, supported, nurtured, and happy. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah, very nice. So, um, what does heart math do? What can heart math do for you? Um, well, it maximizes intelligence, improves motivation, memory, improves sleep patterns and also enables you to survive if you don't get any sleep. Um, it balances hormonal systems, improves health and well-being, um, reduces stress and improves behaviour. I, I don't know about that last one because I don't think it's improved my behaviour, but maybe I'm just beyond improvement. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's amazing, Liz, and I see a lot of people in the room that thinking, yeah, I want a bit of that, especially if it makes you younger. But I'm just wondering, sort of, how many, or oh, clearly, <laughs> how many times would you say to a client that they need to practice the heart mass breathing in order to achieve that so you can manage their expectations? Is it like if you do that a couple of times a day, every day, or what would your thoughts be on that? Um, I think that um, <laughs> if you can do 15 minutes, um, of heart math a day, you're on the road to um, a brilliant, brilliant future. If you can do it 15 minutes twice a day, then oh my god. Um, and you know, fit it in as much as you can. Um, heart math have got um, the M wave, so the M wave. Um, allows you to plug into a computer. I was asking Carl if he had it because I wanted to show it to you guys. But essentially, um, you, you can plug into the computer, you hook up to the sensor, and then you start to breathe your way through the programs, essentially. And if you can do that twice or three times a day, then you're going to see, you're going to start to see improvements within about a six week period. Mm -hmm. And that will be because you're just in the zone. Um, athletes that kind of do amazing things, people like, you know, Usain Bolt and what have you, they use technologies, either this or something directly like it, to get themselves into the zone before they perform at their peak. Um, and then they're, they're obviously using it ongoing as well to keep themselves at that level. So that's what this is used for. It's almost for. a bit like meditation, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, um, but it is just, it's meditation, but employing the most powerful thing, thing that we have inside our bodies to meditate with. So um, when you look at traditional meditation, it's about focusing the mind, it's about calming the mind. And I guess it, that might be because many, many moons ago when they decided that it was going to be useful to meditate, the brain would have been perceived as the most powerful organ in our bodies we now know that it's not actually the brain that's the most powerful organ it's the heart so how about we bring the heart in when we're when we're doing our meditations sorry no it's not you don't need to apologize this is mine 
this is mine. Awesome. So, well, <laughs> they did know. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> that's good. How are you <laughs> yeah, Exactly. That's it. And because it is, I mean, I, I would hear the terminology, focus the mind, focus the mind. But if in Buddhism that's the mind, then we're on the same page. Yeah. I guess what this does um, is if you're not a Buddhist, it enables you to, um, to do it with a system mm. that means that it's accessible to those of us who are quite jittery. Because I find um, sitting and meditating for hours on end and not being able to speak or not being able to fidget quite difficult. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. So, Paula. Do you think that it's because you're using no. alpha waves for heart math and with meditation you're in one of the lower frequencies? It could be, um, it could be that it, because alpha is, is closer to beta, which is um, closer to what the usual okay. member of society is used to. Three minutes, okay. Um, and, and so, I think that it's a nice bridge, if you see what I mean. And it's not the panacea, but it's definitely a bridge. It's a way in for people who don't usually meditate and don't know how to do it. So thank you. <laughs>